a virtual football Tuesday. I mean, nothing's the same this year, so why should this be? Jack Rothenberg and Mason Viner giving it to you, kind of subbing in for Wayne and Bruce, who would usually be here from Tyser Tower on a Tuesday, talking Terps and Penn State. A uh, game that's going to be a lot different. I mean, Jack, I'm not sure if you saw on Saturday, but what would have been the traditional whiteout from Happy Valley? It looked kind of dead with uh, no fans in the pieced together Penn State Stadium that it is. Uh, what what do you kind of expect on Saturday? I mean, Jordan Mosley said the games are like a scrimmage this year without the fans. Right, yeah. It's definitely going to play to Maryland's advantage with there being no fans. I thought it played to Ohio State's advantage, obviously, that there weren't any fans because everyone knows Penn State fans go wild, especially with those white outs. Uh For Maryland, you just got to expect – you got to expect the offense to keep humming. I mean, they looked great against Minnesota. You just got to hope that they can continue that success against Penn State. but. The key to key for me for Maryland is going to be on the defensive side of the ball. Can they keep up what they did in the fourth quarter, get stops, give the ball back to that offense, and hopefully they can get some points on the board? Yeah, and that kind of takes us into it. For Penn State, it's been a tough year and, and kind of an unexpected tough year. Uh, last week, the loss to Ohio State, they really weren't in the game. I mean, they got some really positive calls, uh, especially near the end of the first half where Fields took a knee on a fourth down. They put one second on the clock. Penn State gets three there. And then a rare loss to Indiana uh, in week one uh, by what some would call a questionable call. I mean, I loved it. I saw it live time, thought it was a two-point conversion. <laughs> it was definitely touchdown. questionable. Yeah, for Penix DraftKings, uh, they refunded the people that bet on the game because it was <laughs> too close to call. Uh, but it lost a rare loss to Indiana week one. Penn State. It's nothing but a must win for Coach Franklin. What do you? What's your kind of take on the Nittany Lions at at 0 and 2 in this all Big Ten season? Like you said, definitely a uh, must win game for the Nittany Lions. That's why I think Maryland's kind of playing with house money here. They're not expected to win, so if they can pull off the upset, it would be big for them. But I do expect Penn State to come out, hit someone hard, uh, get off to a fast start because, like you said, this is a must win, and they need to they need to come out fast. Yeah, Jack, we were kind of talking um, before the game last Friday, and you kind of just threw out the line that I gave to Maryland from last week. You got to go out there and make something happen quickly and get, get your mojo back without the fans backing you, without any kind of environment around you. It's uh, bring your own juice thing. And I think for uh, Penn State, they'll, they'll find that juice, you know, as much as I disdain that program and, and really don't like their culture, they do have one that that's really about you know, being a Penn State football player and, and really bringing that kind of past and history that that program has to the game. But without the fans, I do agree with you. It gives the Terps a better chance. It gives Tunga Vailoa uh, a kind of a rare chance as a freshman. You know, he's not playing with any road noise in his ear. He he can kind of go through his progressions and counts for the I think that Jake Funk is a guy that you got to talk about. What do you think he can do, and, and how can they kind of keep the ball moving with him? I feed him early, feed him often. That that would be my philosophy. Just, uh, he got a boatload of carries on Friday, and just keep it moving with him. And I think you saw that with the RPO options. That's how Jayshon Jones got that long, long play. So feed him early, feed him often, and it'll open up things for other people. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Yeah, and I think that, that that's definitely got to be your way to play it, you know. And I was talking on the Young Turfs podcast on Sunday. This is the first time that I can really – Remember, at the last few years, they've had really a true lead back. You know, as good as Ty Johnson and Lorenzo, they split carries. Then Ty Johnson, Anthony McFarland, and Javon Leak split carries. And then Anthony McFarland, Javon Leak, and Tayon Fleet Davis split carries. Uh, this year, for the first time, they got a guy, and he's the guy. You know, and Jake Funk is really good at that. You know, he can take a lot of carries. He's a good high workload uh, workhorse running back. Uh, a guy that you got to kind of got to bring up that didn't really appear against Northwestern, but came on against Minnesota as Rock Jarrett, uh, the five-star freshman out of St. John's College High School. What did you think of him as a running back? Because they were playing him out of the backfield as a passing back a lot. I loved it. What did you see on 
uh, on Friday. Yeah, yeah, like you said, I loved it, and I mean they they used him well, I thought, and if they can keep using him that way, it'll it'll pay dividends for the Terps in the future. Yeah, I definitely would agree. So uh, let's talk about kind of the bigger bigger picture here. Maryland and Penn State, it's a battle, especially with Coach Loxley involved now, recruiting James Franklin against Mike Loxley on the recruiting trail. Uh, the Terps have definitely made inroads into Maryland, even with the loss of Marcus Bradley out of their class this past week. The Terps have done a great job. Uh, area. What do you think a Terps win causes on Saturday if they're able to pull it off? Right. We were actually talking about this last week. I think it would be big for Mike Loxley to beat your rival school after last year's defeat, which was very ugly. It would just be a big stepping stone for him to get. How many How many more recruits do you think he could get? So many more recruits would come in if he can get this win, I think. It's just, like I said, big stepping stone for Mike Loxley. Right. And the Terps, you know, while they're doing a lot better in the trail, uh, going back to the last cycle, they lose uh, Brian Breesey to Clemson. It's kind of a given. I mean, the number one player in the country comes out of your area. Maryland had a shot, but with the coaching change, Jordan McNair situation, they just weren't going to win that one. And then um, also in the last cycle, they lose a kid at a good council to Penn State, Landon Tengwall from good council. Um, Penn State still has, you know, they still have their share of this area. But as the Oklahomas and Clemsons and Alabamas have really entered and be introduced uh, to the DMV, Maryland and Penn State have kind of been really fighting in that like player rank seven to 15 area where you really build up your team and get those guys. Um, the best players out of this area are starting to really go to your Ohio State's Oklahoma's Clemson. But Maryland and Penn State's truly a battle now for for the meat of their teams and especially the skill position uh, with Penn State. For. Saturday, kind of give us a prediction. What do you what do you think happens? I, I can't predict the Maryland win, but I, I hope that they can, like we said, start start fast, start early, feed Jake Flonk, get some points on the board. But like I said, I can't go with a Maryland win just because Penn State, they're 0-2. They get, they're coming out hungry. I think they're going to get the win, uh, maybe 31-17, something like that. But like I said, I'm hoping that we can see uh, Leah and this offense come out, play like they did on Friday, and hopefully this defense can show us something that can prove that they can get some stops, some timely stops uh, late late in games. Yeah, I think my emphasis for this one, Jack, and, and I really think it's going to be everyone's from all the experts on the Terps, is what happens early. Can they start the game like they did against both Northwestern and Minnesota? And I think they can. I think that gives them enough juice to stick in it, at least for the first half. Uh, a game that I think will remind Terp fans of not – the game three years ago where um, Maryland went up to Penn State, uh, they competed for a good half to three quarters, kind of let the game slip away. I think this one looks similar. Maryland's bad against what Penn State's good at. A running quarterback, the Terps have been bad against for really as long as I can remember, and I've been watching these games sometimes way longer than I would uh, like to admit to because it's been a rough, uh, rough 10 years here. And they're bad against the tight ends, and Penn State's got a great tight end. I think uh, the Nittany Lions are just a little bit too much for the Terps. I'm taking Penn State, 38-28. Uh, it's not going to be the best defensive game, I'll put it that way. Both of these teams struggling on defense. And with that, I guess um, we'll wrap up this football Tuesday. Jack, uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll keep doing this as the season rolls on. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me.